This is that Caddo knife I'm working on. This is sold. I'm making it for somebody now. And uh, come out, come out good. The plunge lines come out good. There are so many areas. There's so many steps. And each little step, you can totally screw up the knife. And uh, once you get it past the grinding part and the plunge lines are equal and the height of the bevels are equal, you can take a, a deep breath because you're out of the woods. Not really. I mean, there's still things you can do to screw it up, but uh, that's the, the major things that you can do are on the grinder. So, this knife is completely flat. And it took me about two hours with a ceramic belt. It, it's still on there. The ceramic belt is still on there uh, to get this blade flat. And let me tell you, I don't know if I want to make this a separate. I'll tell you a, the quick. I bought this whole billet. It was 17 inches long. My intention was to get six knives out of it, three on each half. Well, this half over was in pretty good shape. Um, it was still waffly. I mean, it was uh, eight, uh, three sixteenths in one area and a quarter inch in another area. And uh, <clears throat> like I said, it took me two hours on the belt grinder to get this. Uh, the same thickness all the way across. This half is even worse. It's less than an eighth of an inch right there. And then it goes up to three sixteenths. Three sixteenths is what I ordered. So uh, now I have to grind everything else down to the thinnest to eighth inch. Or I have to just throw away this little part here. I mean, I could get a cleaver out of this. Or I could get a couple of knives out that... Actually, I could get another one of these out of here. Let me see. Yeah, and then a dinner skinner up here. Because I'm trying to avoid the dip and the thin stock right there. So anyway, I called these people. Yeah, I'll go ahead and tell you the whole story. Uh, Texan, it's either Texas knife or Texan knives. Uh, I will be sure before I upload this, I'll find out for absolute certain and I'll leave a link to their website. Let me shut this off. I'll leave a link to their website so you'll know who not to buy from. I bought this from, I'm going to say Texan knife. Texan knives until I know for sure. I, I'm almost positive that's who it is. Uh, they're out of t Texas, here in Texas, uh, down by uh, uh, Houston, north of Houston, Kingsport, uh, down that way, Humble. And I figured, well, number one, they're, you know, a local Texas company, so I'll keep my money in the state. Number two, they're only about three and a half hours from me, so the shipping should certainly be cheaper. Well, I get it in the mail, and right out of the mailbox, I see that the thing has got a bow in it. And uh, I should have sent it back, but I didn't. I thought, well, I could probably straighten it out. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll figure something out. And I did. I cut the, this knife and another knife out of it. And I had to, both knives I had to straighten out. And But this is where the, the biggest part of the bow is. Let me see if I can show you that. Can you see the, the daylight gap through that? This was the worst. And uh, so anyway, I didn't send it back and I should have. Anyway, I called him up this morning and he answered. And when he answered, it was, uh, let, me, let me see if I've got the accent 
correct. Very good day to you, sir. How are you today, sir? Get what I'm saying? When he ta- started talking, I my suspicion was that these are not made in America. The craftsmanship, the workmanship is uh, not something that would fly here in the United States. If I was to have bought this through Alabama, Damascus, it would be one thickness all the way across. And uh, this wasn't. It was, this was clearly made in a third world country. And I believe Pakistan is where it came from. And I believe Pakistan is the accent of the man who answered the phone. And he sells already made knives of Damascus, made from Damascus on Amazon. Texas Knife. I'm almost positive that's the name of it. Anyway, anyway. And the price of the uh, completely made knives with sheaths is so cheap, they couldn't possibly be American made, and yet he's calling them American made. And I'm saying, bullshit. There's no way you can make a custom knife out of Damascus in the USA with handle and pins and Damascus steel and leather for and sell it on Amazon for 50, 60 bucks. You just can't do it. It's not possible. So uh, Pakistan, all day long, you can buy knife blanks from Pakistan uh, for eight or 10 bucks. <clears throat> and I went and I looked at the reviews and all the reviews were the same thing. Uh, poorly built, Handles cracked, knife bent, you know, made out of warp steel. So, uh, yeah, they're not made in America. And the guy is a freaking liar. And uh, we talked about, I said, well, I've got half of it left. You know, uh, he said, well, what do you want me to do like that? I said, uh, I would like half my money back. It's actually over half the steel I got left, over half. You refund half my money, I'll send this back to you. And he said, no, 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 uh, I'll make you another one. No, no, you won't make me another one. You're not making them there. You can't tell me you're making them there. I saw the building that you're in. I Google Earth, your, uh, street viewed your building, and there's no way you are forging steel in that building. And he said, no, 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 I, I don't forge it here. I forge it at another location. And I didn't say, dude, you are a... M F and liar, and uh, I said no. Never mind. I got a YouTube channel. I'm gonna tell people all about you, and uh, that'll be worth the money I spent for this. So I'm gonna salvage this. I can get a cat-o out of it by cutting around this warped area here, the thin area, and I can get a dinner skinner out of this top area. So instead of six knives out of this for 160 bucks. I will have gotten four knives, and I'm still, I'm selling the knives to my friends, so I can't really charge the the price that I wanted to charge for this Damascus, just because I, I can't do that to my friends, you know? I'm selling it to them for actually as, as cheap as I can sell it, because they're my friends. <laughs> and uh, anyway, that's my story with this. I got snookered, lesson learned. Uh, Ricky buys his from Alabama, Damascus, and I thought I'd be smart and buy from Texas and save myself a little bit of shipping. I ended up paying, I ended up getting fewer knives out of it than if I had spent another dollar or two and, uh, got it from Alabama, Damascus and have been the whole, you know, from start to finish, it would have been a good piece of steel. Oh, well, live and learn. This is just, this has truly been a a learning experience. Okay, uh, I'm going to start sanding on this knife. I'm going to start sanding on the handle first and then turn it around and then start polishing the uh, grind lines out of here. I am up to uh, 80 and so I'm going to start at 120 here and well, let's get going. Her cooling down. Yeah, she's got her her butt facing that fan, and yeah. 
If she's not careful, she's going to end up blowing up like a football. <laughs> she love her fan. Mm. I'm afraid she's not going to be with us. What the? Billy, when you ride home in your dad's truck, do you have to use Lysol to get in it? <laughs> do you use Germex when you get out of it? You had you had to change your clothes and take a shower. <laughs> oh, golly.